adorable little squirrel is actually made using one of Chloe Knight's paid patterns. I love her free patterns, but buying um, helps contribute and they are re actually quite different. I bought this one a little while ago. Um, it was prepared um, off screen um, as I usually prepare all my printed patterns. Printed it, covered it with sticky back plastic, cut it out. From there it went over to the embroidery machine for the eyes. Uh, this one came with the embroidery files, but just to make a note, not all of her paid patterns actually come with the embroidery files. Um, so do keep an eye out with that. If you want to go over to her shop on Etsy, take a look. She has some beautiful patterns. Some of them have the embroidery files separate. So we start sewing with the forehead. Um, I don't know if you call it a gadet. Um, as I'm making a red squirrel, I'm just using all the same colour apart from the stomach. You can come up with some really amazing colour combinations. You could do this part completely different colour. Um, I've got a Facebook group. I'd love to see if anybody comes up with some little wacky combinations for this one. Once you've done the top of the head, you move over to the ears, which obviously once sewn, we turn them the right side out, fold them to give them that really, really cute little folded look, and baste them, which has to be done before sewing the back and the front of the head together. You have to sew up the back of the head, you don't need to leave a gap here, and then sew the back of the head to the front of the head. Move on to adding the tail to the back. Um, in the future, I may actually try and um, attaching this in the pattern part, which remove this step. The reason that the tail and the body are separate is because of when you've got stretchy fabrics, you need to have the stretch going in different directions. If you've got a fabric like the one I'm using here, which has no giving in whatsoever, having the grain on the tail and the body going in different directions really doesn't matter. Um, then you sew both sides of the body together along the back seam and around whichever tail you've chosen. Then you're going to sew the head to the body and you sew a chin into the head. Add the bottom or tummy to the top of the body and sew around leaving the bottom of the neck where the chin meets the um, chest area unsewn so we can turn the twirl the right way around. Once we've turned it the right side round, we have to make sure that all the crevices, so the tail, the feet, um, are all stuffed um, before we go onto the head and the body. 
and then using a mattress stitch we sew up and seal the opening and now you have your very own little pet squirrel. I'm going to be honest here, I find this pattern very fiddly. It's not for beginners. Um, I think it actually lends itself more towards hand sewing due to the size of it. So it's actually quite a good project for children to hand sew as opposed to adults to sew on the machine, which I know is slightly contradictory here, but um, it is adaptable. You get quite a few different patterns in with it, um, in that you get the sugar glider as well as the squirrel. You can come up with some beautiful colour color combinations. And with a little bit of adaption or the adding of a strap or even a pin, it may even be able to be turned into something that's wearable due to the size. With a bit of imagination, some wacky colour combinations, I suspect we'll have new species out there in absolutely no time. Go wild! enjoy just be prepared you may need to practice this one a few times before you get the result that you're happy with